First of all, I'd like to thank Ruby and Christopher for, I assume, volunteering to do this. They are part of productivity efforts, save us some money in the process. I waited quite a few months before they finally gave me this uh, MOM jacket. But now I realize they gave, gave it to me to hide the wires from my mic. But I thought at least I can keep this jacket until I saw the word Kam Chong. <laughs> so I'm supposed to zip it up a bit so the, <laughs> the names don't come up. Anyway, I'd like to thank uh, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Manpower, uh, Mr. Thaman Shamogaratnam, for arrowing me to do this. <laughs> Unlike the two MCs who volunteered. But there's, there's a reason in, in doing this. Uh, for many of you out there who sometimes feel very frustrated when decisions are shoved down your throat, this is to tell you it's a fair, inclusive society. <laughs> it applies to all of us. We're all part of the food chain. Mr. Lim Sui Se, uh, Secretary General, NTUC, Ms. Diana Chia, President, NTUC, uh, Mr. Stephen Lee, President, SNEF, Mr. Tony Chiu, Chairman, SBF, Mr. John DePeva, President Emeritus, NTUC, distinguished guests, and all our fellow mamas. A very good morning to all of you. The video you just watched um, really is a, it's a simple and a small testimony to all the hard work that all of you have put in, I think not just in MOM, but all our tripartite partners as well, in making a difference to the lives of Singaporeans and to all workers in Singapore. What I think we need to understand is that what we do here makes a real difference. There is a purpose to what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We also, therefore, need to understand the responsibilities that we shoulder. We cannot create policies from a ivory tower precisely because it impacts lives on a daily basis in a very real way. So we need to apply our wisdom and our compassion in all that we do. So thank you very much for all the hard work and trying our very best to make things better for all Singaporeans. So maybe another round of applause for ourselves. Okay, okay, enough, enough. enough. All right, we shouldn't praise ourselves too much. Huh? So yeah, maybe just a very quick backdrop, okay, just to understand where we are. Firstly, we all know the economy grew by 4.9% in 2011. By all counts, I think that is a good, solid figure. But the figure in itself doesn't mean anything. Because with economic growth, strong economic growth, it generates jobs. And these jobs go to Singaporeans. At the same time, we created 122,600 new jobs. Unemployment dropped to a 14-year low at 2%, or for Singapore citizens, about 3%, lower than practically most economies around the world. Amidst this tight labour market, for 2011, average nominal earnings of our workers grew by about 6%. After you compensate for inflation, it's about 0.7%. Which again is not bad, considering that wages around the world is either stagnating, or in some cases, declining. So overall, I think 2011 was, was actually quite good. 2012 is remains uncertain. I think outlook, there are moments of hope, but what we are more concerned about are bouts of panic and weaknesses that can still happen and will tilt things over. In Asia, growth is slowing down as a result of slowing export growth. So against this backdrop, we expect in Singapore in 2012 that economic growth would probably hover about 1-3%. to That's barring any unforeseen circumstances that might happen, particularly with the Eurozone. So we, we cannot change the world in Singapore, but we can certainly manage the space that we own, and we must continue to focus on our longer-term goal, which is to restructure the economy, to transform it, and to focus on productivity improvements, and to ensure that sustainable growth can take place in Singapore. So as encapsulated in the Budget 2012, what we want to build is an inclusive society and to build a stronger Singapore. What is this inclusive society? In many ways, it is one where all citizens can aspire and work towards a better life for themselves and for their families. It is also one where we can provide for those who may be left out. An inclusive society is also one where everyone can contribute and play a part in shaping the kind of Singapore that we want to build. What is MOM's role in all this? For a start, I believe we endeavour to provide Singaporeans access to jobs, and access to good jobs. And via jobs and good jobs, we have access to higher incomes and wages, 
And that in turn would also provide for our financial security for the long term, especially in our retirement years. What this does is it provides, we play a very important role in providing a very strong foundation upon which Singaporeans can then look at realizing their various dreams and aspirations to create a better future for themselves, a brighter future for themselves and for their families. So the best protection in many ways comes from providing Singaporeans with good jobs. Providing Singaporeans must be the central focus of all that we do. So the dots must connect. If it doesn't add up to providing for Singaporeans, it will not make any sense. So we must stay focused on that. And that really is a core purpose for which we exist. We need to ensure that Singapore remains an attractive place for business. Why is that so? It is only when businesses come here, when our businesses stay here and thrive, that these jobs can be created and good jobs in the process for young, aspiring Singaporeans to work towards. They create jobs both directly when businesses are here and indirectly because there are also a host of businesses that exist and grow to support these other businesses. And this is something that we must retain. There are many reasons uh, why companies come here. Stable and secure environment that we create is one factor. But one of the attractive factors that keep companies here and draw them here is that we have skilled and competitive workforce. At the same time, we have access to a flexible and responsive labour market. And this is really quite critical for us. It is a very competitive world out there, but some of these factors provide us with the edge, which is why companies do come, why our companies continue to stay on and in turn continue to create jobs. I think this is a series of links that we have to understand and to understand how we play that part. And we must try to keep this. So we want to ensure that we raise the quality of our existing jobs by ensuring that Singaporean workers are also treated fairly and responsibly. And we do this in several ways. Firstly, we must ensure that the legislative framework that we have remains relevant and remains updated. Secondly, we must make sure that employers do keep to their end of the bargain. So really what it means is about compliance and enforcement. And thirdly, we also need to encourage good HR practices where our employers can mentor and can be good stewards of our workforce. The Employment Act or the EA is Singapore's main employment labour law that sets out the minimum employment terms and that shapes the responsibilities and relationship between employers and employees. The EA has been in place since 1968. We've had several reviews over the years. And so far, I think it's been fairly effective in safeguarding the rights and the interests of our workers, especially those who are vulnerable. But there is a need to ensure that the Employment Act keeps up with the times. As a change, there are changes in employment practices and employment landscape. For, first of all, the character of our labour force is changing. Singaporeans are becoming more educated. We are increasingly having more professionals, managers and executives or PMEs in the workforce today. Today, PMEs form about 32% of the workforce. This is up from 27% in 2001. And we will expect this proportion to increase. At the same time, employment norms and practices are also evolving. Today, there's a lot more outsourcing that's taking place. As a result of that, there are changes in the work arrangements. So we have short-term contracts, for example, emerging in very significant ways. So we need to look at the EA in the context of these changes as well. As we're looking at improving the wage conditions for our low-wage workers, we should also look at how the Employment Act can better look after workers in these sectors. Because we know that the relationship with employers in these areas are often imbalanced in favour of the employers. Therefore, MOM will review the Employment Act this year. We will work very closely with our tripartite partners. We will work closely with various stakeholders. And importantly, I think we do want to take on board the perspectives from the public as much as we can as we shape and review the Employment Act. But the Employment Act, and we will acknowledge this, regulations are only really as effective as compliance, and laws are only relevant and make sense if we can enforce them. So we will step up efforts to ensure compliance in our employment laws, in our CPF Act, 
and Employment Act. In 2010, for example, CPF audits and investigations helped recover CPF arrears for 6,000 workers in 2,600 companies. We stepped up in 2011 and we recovered $9.5 million in CPF arrears for 10,000 employees in 3,700 companies. MOM and CPF board will step up its effort in the coming years. Finally, we also have a promotional role to encourage and facilitate fair and responsible employment HR practices. So we have tapped on the strong tripartite partnership to establish the Tripartite Alliance of Fair Employment Practice, or TAFEP. Firstly, the intent is to effect a mindset change, and that is really important. It's not just about legislation, but how do we change our attitudes in terms of the way we hire and in the way we employ our people. Secondly, it's also to facilitate good practices in the work environment by providing the necessary tools and resources and to encourage employers and employees in the process. Tomorrow morning, or tomorrow, there will be a conference on fair employment practices organized by the Singapore Tripartism Forum, and I will be sharing more on this tomorrow.